Crimson Trace offers a free Batteries for Life program that includes nearly all laser sights, electronic sights, and rifle scopes. Just register your product for a free set of batteries each year at CrimsonTrace.com. Hi, this is Congressman Steve Scalise. I really want to wish Tom congratulations on 25 years of Gun Talk Radio. Thanks for all the work you've done over the years defending our Second Amendment rights. Hi, Tom. This is Tom Taylor at Sid Sauer. I just want to congratulate you on 25 years of unbelievable coverage in the gun industry. Hey, it's Pete Brownell. Just want to say Tom's been kicking ass for 25 years. We greatly appreciate it. Who the fuck it? The predictions were you could last uh, six, 12 weeks, man. Holy cow. Hey, by the way, I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. Glad that you could be with us. We're still here. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, this is called Tom Gresham's Gun Talk because who else would have been dumb enough to start talking on the radio about guns? We hit 25 years as of today, as of this moment. Holy cow. 25 years times 52 weeks. This is show number 1300. <laughs> Oh, we're going to be talking a good bit uh, with some of our friends today about really what's transpired in 25 years, not just on the radio show, although we will talk a little bit about that, but about gun rights, about guns in particular, about training, about self-defense, about concealed carry permits, about just the changes in a quarter century. It's incredible. Wow, a quarter century when I started this show. And we'll talk about how that all came about a little bit later on in the show and what it has done. I would invite your calls, your comments, if there are any particular shows, calls, guests that you remember that stuck with you. Love to hear about that. Our number is still 866-TALK-GUN or just call Tom Talk Gun. Yep, it's still toll free, even though everybody has uh, cell phones now and it doesn't cost anything to make a long distance call back then, 25 years ago, man. That's, that's long distance. That's going to cost me money to make that phone call. <laughs> what a change. What a change. It has been a hoot. It has been fun. Uh, I've been able to meet some of the most wonderful people. You know, the guests we have, the callers we have, and the listeners, and the, the emails we get, all the rest of it. We've been able to build uh, the whole Gun Talk Media off of this. TV shows, online shows, digital apps, phone apps, all the rest of it. We'll cover a little bit of that. And honestly, let me back up. And I don't know that I ever share this. If, if I do, it's very rare. When I started Gun Talk Radio, remember, talk radio was new. And oh, yes, oh, yes. By the way, if you haven't done it yet, we found show number one from March 5, 1995. It was on a cassette tape. We digitized it. Thank you, Jim Kinsey. Uh, we put it up as a podcast last Thursday. So if you want to hear what this thing sounded like on the very first show and what a guy who had never talked on the radio before sounded like, hint, it wasn't very good. I wasn't very good. But we did it. We even had fake callers because, hey, we didn't have a show. We certainly didn't have any callers. So I had people <laughs> pretend to be callers. We fess up to that as well. Uh, actually, we're going to have one of those fake callers on the show today, 25 years later. It's a friend of mine. It'll be fun. Uh, but what was the thinking? Well, remember, we were one year after the passage of the Clinton gun ban, the so-called assault weapons ban, which was passed in 1994. And we were getting hammered in the media on guns, just as we are today. Exact same thing. And I had caught CNN making up quotes they were actually quoting ATF agents, and I tracked down the ATF agent because they said, well, this ATF agent said that, of course, these semi-automatic rapid-fire weapons figure prominently in crime, and they actually quoted the guy. They gave, gave his name. I found him in the ATF, called him and talked to him. He says, I have never talked to anybody at CNN. They have never interviewed me, and if they had... I would have told them the exact opposite. These rifles basically are statistically insignificant in crime. CNN just flat made it up. So that's what we were facing then. Of course, it's exactly the same thing we're facing now. And so my thinking was this, and still is, frankly. I wanted to provide a reasonable-sounding voice for gun owners out there, for the public 
to hear. And the way I explained it, remember, this was before podcast or anything else. We were, by the way, the first gun-related podcast. I think it was this. This couple is driving down the road, and they're hitting the scan button on their radio in the car back when you listened to radio stations. You know, <laughs> everybody had that, didn't have CDs and all the rest of it. Um, and they land on this show, and people are talking about guns, and they listen to us for a little while. And what I would like for them to come away with is, wow, those people sound like they're having fun. And those people sound just like us. And that's it. And I had a uh, official mission statement as I started the quote-unquote business, which is just me talking on the radio. Who knew what it was going to grow into? The mission statement was and is the same today. I figured I might as well go big or go home, right? And the mission statement is, the goal of this endeavor is to permanently change the way guns and gun owners are viewed in America. That's it. <laughs> Still working on it, but we are getting there. Holy cow, crazy stuff. Uh, I mean, look at all the people who have concealed carry permits now who didn't before. Really something. I just uh, see a story that just came out. In Minnesota, record number of concealed carry permits, 301,000, nearly double what it was in 2014, concealed carry permits. Let's see, they have revoked and suspended, uh, let's see, 143 permits suspended, uh, revoking 33, which is, wait for it, five hundredths, not tenths, five hundredths of one percent, five hundredths of one percent of the carry permits have been revoked or suspended. In other words, we're the good guys and gals. We're the ones who obey the laws. We're the ones you'd want with you anywhere. And we carry loaded guns around. Wow, who'd have thunk it? They actually, uh, in the story uh, they interviewed, said uh, permit holder Sarah Hopman told the papers that carrying a firearm in public, quote, gives you more options to respond to dangerous situations. It's all about having a choice and a chance. She continued, I view my gun as a tool that gives me parity of force with bigger, stronger, or more numerous opponents. She says, I have the ability to enforce decisions about my body and my boundaries without depending on others. I have more options than just hoping for rescue. I am my own rescue. There you have it. 18 million people with carry permits. 16, six, maybe 17 states now that have constitutional carry. Where you don't even have to ask the government's permission to get a carry permit. That's one thing that has changed. We worked really hard to get concealed carry permits, and now we're working really hard to get rid of them. <laughs> Think about it, though. When a state says you have to have a permit to carry a gun, what they're saying is, uh, what they, what they're saying is that we're going to take away your right, but we'll sell it back to you. Just simple as that. All right, tell you what, we'll take a quick break here. If you'd like to be a part of this, eight six six Talk Gun. We'll also have a number of guests lined up coming up. We've got Ted Nugent. We've got a whole bunch of others. Again, eight six six Talk Gun. I am Tom Gresham, and this is yes, twenty five years of gun talk. When the U.S. military's elite units and law enforcement agencies across the globe demanded innovation and reliability, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. When world champion professional shooters demanded precision accuracy, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. So it's no surprise more and more civilian gun owners are refusing to settle for anything less. They're choosing Sig Sauer firearms, ammunition, electro-optics, suppressors, air guns, and training. Sig Sauer. Never settle. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive. 
for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Easy monitoring of your personal gun safe, hotel room safe, toolbox, storage unit, luggage, and more is now an option with the Lockdown Puck. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection to receive notifications from the puck on your phone about an open door, any detected motion, and even temperature and humidity readings. Secure what matters most with the Lockdown Puck. Visit LockdownPuck.com to learn more and to pre-order your puck today. Hey, Tom, Dave Spalding from Handgun Combative. I want to congratulate you on 25 years. I don't know if you realize it, but not only have you informed the gun community, you've saved a bunch of lives out there, and, and we cannot thank you enough. So continue. Good luck, partner. Wow, 25 years. Unbelievable. And uh, thanks to all the folks. I'll be uh, throwing out a few thanks here and describing who's been involved in this thing and you know, who helped us along the way. Pretty much everybody, actually, truth be known. Great guests, great staff, great people, great friends. They've all become very good friends. By the way, if you haven't listened to that show, number one, it's on the podcast. It's on our YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, it's pretty funny, actually. It's the very first show from 25 years ago available. You know, we were able to line up some of our friends to do uh, quick recorded interviews with this week. We talked about that. So let me just run right now to the man himself. Let's bring in Ted Nugent. Hey, guess who just joined us? It's Ted Nugent. Man, you talk about a guy who's been on the show a lot throughout this 25 years. Hey, Ted. Tom, congratulations. 25 big ones, man. You're just starting. <laughs> and, you know, it's fun because when we're doing the show, I'm just as likely as not to get a text from you in the middle of it. And you're listening to the show and you're going, hey, you want to talk about this? And the answer is always yes, because it's Ted. Well, Tom, you got to know that whenever I listen to you, and I listen to you every chance I can because my life is gun talk. I mean, I do the ballistic ballet every day, whether it's guitars or 10 millimeters or howitzers. That's my life. My life is gun talk. But there is not a show. There is not a gun talk show. There is not a word out of your mouth on any of your shows where I don't want to text you and go, I'd like to talk about that because <laughs> I did that or I'm about to do that. So believe me, I use great, great restraint when I, te when I text you. <laughs> All right. So the, the question I have to ask is, what is it with you and the 10 millimeter? Why the 10? Well, you know, I knew Evan Marshall uh, back in Detroit uh, when he started studying all the uh, homicides and did all the ballistic testing, did probably the most thorough forensic investigations into shootings and right. how much how many rounds it took to stop. So I take my gift of life from God very seriously. And there is no condition or encounter or circumstance where I would allow myself to be ill-prepared and unarmed and helpless. So when I studied the Miami shootout, when they started doing the testing and got Cooper to recommend a one-shot stop handgun, which we know is it, it's ridiculous, really, but the best performing is the 10 millimeter. And I saw that on paper... The 10 millimeter performed X, but on flesh and angry pork, it really was above and beyond what it performed on paper. Mm. It, it, it's like the 243 when it came out. You know, they, they gave it, they attributed certain ballistic capabilities, but in the field, it actually killed like lightning, in my experience. And the same thing with a 10 millimeter. If a, if a pissed off hog was coming at you, I could stop him really pronto, Tonto. In fact, I've got kills on Elon. So through actual hands-on field, pragmatic, real world utility, um, I discovered that the 10 was an all-around performer. Up in Alaska, they've, they've adopted the 10 as the, the most, even though we know it's not a real grizzly stopper, but in the real world, 
It has saved lives, and it's the number one carried uh, bear gun uh, on a daily carry routine up in Alaska. So I think people have come to understand the capabilities of the mighty 10 millimeter. Absolutely. Let me just do this, too. I want to thank you. I mean, you've been doing it for a lot longer than 25 years, supporting and really bolstering the Second Amendment and preaching it everywhere you go. So I just want to thank you, and I appreciate you being my friend. Back at you, Tom, and again, thank, congratulations, uh, 25 years, and when Tom Gresham talks guns, it's like Ted Nugent talking guns, so thank you for that. You bet. Hey, thanks so much. Hey, how about that? Ted Nugent talking with him about uh, all these years on gun talk, and he does listen to the show, I guarantee you. You know, another guy that we've had a, a lot of fun with through the years, and he is, of course, one of the best shooters on the planet, has been winning world championships for longer than 25 years, actually, and and we... We had a lot of fun with him. He's Rob Latham. I grabbed Rob uh, literally as he was going out the door to go shooting the other day. So here he is. Hey, we grabbed Rob Latham as he's going out the door, heading to the range there. Rob, I was just thinking about uh, the quarter century of gun talk, and you've been shooting competitively for even longer than that and winning. Uh, as you look back over the changes in your time as a competitive shooter, what are the biggest changes you've seen? Everything's changed. You know, when I started, uh, there were people who were hobbyists and would practice occasionally and, you know, get together. And, you know, it was almost just like an informal hangout kind of thing. There weren't any real, I guess you would call them pro shooters. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody that went out yeah, yeah, every day. You had your core group of guys go out to the uh, the, the gravel pit or whatever, right, you, wherever exactly. you went. Go out to the dump. That's what it was. <laughs> and and now it changed into, the, I mean, the, the competitions are so organized, and there are so many of them, and the level of competition is so good. I mean, everything from the from the training programs to to, I mean, just the amount of time we spend shooting, you know, then... It was an issue of shoot when you could. By popularity, it built from nothing to something in no time at all. And people who were doing it as hobbies changed and said, hey, I really want to be good at this. And I'm going to you know, make this the focus of my life kind of thing. I went from shooting once a month to shooting once a week to shooting practically every day, all in you know the course of maybe a two years, three years. And, it, and I was one of hundreds of people that did that. So... That was one huge influx, and mm-hmm. part of that was just the availability of ammunition and, and, and matches, you know, the loading. I remember when I started, we were single-line press loading. Within a couple of years, we could load on progressive machines, which made the quantity of ammo that we needed no uh, longer a problem. Thank goodness to uh, Star and Dylan. But yeah, no kidding. Without those guys, you know, who knows what we'd be doing. Can you really buy a gun off the shelf and go be competitive in most matches? Yeah, you can now. Um, the reality is a off-the-shelf, like a TRP-level gun, was as good or better than what I was waiting two years to get. This is another thing people understand, is the gun cost the same then as it did now. In 1983, you wanted a custom 45, it cost $3,000. You know what it costs now? $3,000. Ammo was more expensive then, that's why we had to load, because it wasn't that easy to go find. You can go buy 9 millimeter ball ammo now for $160 a thousand, and that hasn't changed. And the matches, too. I mean, you can't overlook the matches. At the beginning, there was one match a month in Phoenix, Arizona. And so if you wanted to shoot, you know, you made that match. And it was the only one going at Cactus League. It was hard to understand how much you looked forward to going to that match. You didn't want it to be over in two hours. You know, it started at sunrise and we finished in the dark. And we couldn't wait to do it. Now, in Phoenix, every Sunday there's a match at least at two places. Every Saturday there's a match at at least three places, and through the course of the week there's seven or eight matches. And you know it's something we're living it. We're living in, I guess, what would you say? The these are these are the salad days for the practical shooting world, especially if you're in Arizona. Don't you actually have to put in a, a fair amount of time before you can learn how to win? Oh, absolutely. When I started, I had no I I, I was a great shot. I was very, very fast, and I could be fast or accurate, whichever one you wanted. You know, you just tell me which one do you like. I can give that to you. But it's taken me forever to learn where the where the edge is. Is am I being accurate enough? It takes I don't know, maybe not decades, but it takes years and hundreds of thousands of rounds to gain enough experience to know what the likely outcome of a shot is that you're about to shoot, and then have the discipline to shut it off and say no. No, 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 no. Not taking that chance. Not here, not now. All right, well, Rob Latham, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending some time. I know you got to get out to the range. We'll let you go. All right, now, thank you, and congratulations on 25 years of gun talk. That is awesome. 
Very cool. It's always fun to talk with uh, my friends. Just, well, you know what? Here's the reality, and it's so funny. Uh, I talked about this. We just, by the way, just this past week, we launched the new podcast, Gun Talk Nation, and that's Ryan and KJ hosting that, and you're going to love that. We, uh, th- they interviewed me for that. We talked about the first show and all the rest of it. Uh, it was just it's interesting. I was describing what happened the first, when I first started talking about the show, when I first started doing the show, and I would talk to experts, and talk to radio stations, and talk to consultants, and two or three of them said, you know, well, how could you possibly talk about guns for more than an hour? Aren't you, I mean, after a few weeks, you're just going to run out of things to talk about. And of course, they have no idea. They don't know what kind of passion we have for this. They don't know how involved it is, everything from trap and skeet, sporting clays, long-range shooting, action shooting, hunting, and start dividing hunting up into all the species. And then you get into the whole training and self-defense and collecting and, and all the rest of it. So far, so good. 25 years hadn't run out of things to talk about. I mentioned passion. Uh, if you go back and listen to that show number one, and it's available as a podcast uh, on our YouTube website, our YouTube channel, all the rest of it. After about the second or third week, I went back and listened to the show. And as I said, I had never done radio before. I wasn't very good at it. Uh, but I, you know, I was interested. I, I wanted to do well. And I made up a sign. I printed up a sign. I put it up above the microphone so that when I'm doing the show, I would see the sign. It had two lines on it. The first one said, no, uh. That is, don't say, uh, like, uh, this, uh, that. The other one, just below that, was a sign, was a word in all caps with an exclamation point, and it just said, passion. Bring the passion. Don't hold back. Go for it, because my attitude is, if I bring the passion, then you will, you will bring the passion. And that's what we have for this. It's just, it's a passion for collecting. It's a passion for shooting. It's a passion for hunting. It's a passion for the Second Amendment. It's a passion for liberty. And right now, we need that more than ever. Remember Virginia. Remember what happened there. We've got to get everybody registered to vote. We've got to get them out to vote. When we do that, we win. When we don't, we keep getting laws passed like they just did in Virginia. Ugly stuff out there. Hey, 866-TALK-GUN. Do you remember a particular call or a guest on Gun Talk? Give me a holler. Tom Gresham here. On Gun Talk, 1911 is more than a date. It's an icon. Now, here's Tom. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here, although there's nobody to uh, answer the phone for you right now. (laughs) Our call screener has gone on walkabout. Because he's joining us right now. Michelle Cleland joins us right now as a guest. Michelle, your first time as a guest on the show. That's incredible. I know, but you've been doing the the after show for, what, five years now? Something like that, yeah, five years. Never thought I'd be sitting on this side of the microphone either. (laughs) (laughs) You know, for those who don't know, okay, you're the call screener, also the after show for those who may may not have paid attention. That is part of our podcast version. It doesn't go over the airwaves, but... uh, yeah, I'm really delighted to be able to get you on here so people can get to know you and know you here. How did you? How did it come about in the first place for you to end up being the call screener for Gun Talk? Well, Jim was a patron of our store and had taken several classes with my husband and trained with him for CCW. And it was, I guess, a necessity to get a replacement call screener at the time. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Jim came into the store and was discussing with my husband the fact that he was looking for somebody to uh, to take this role and if he might be interested or knew someone. And my husband said, mm, you need my wife. <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> I came and tried it. And I guess it's been uh, stuck here for well, probably eight years or so. Yeah. Well, you know, and I mean, for those now you get people who call it. Actually, I think they just really want to talk to you. They don't really care if they get on the air. Uh, no. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Maybe a few. <laughs> a little. You, you, you kind of become pals with some of our callers at this point. Yeah. You really have. Yeah. No, absolutely. And you know what? For me, the biggest takeaway is the fact of being female and having others out there in the community, male or female, that are willing to listen or call and, and seek advice from me. I mean, that's that's probably the greatest payback I could ever get from this. 
Yeah, and just so those who don't know you haven't listened to the after show, you're you're a multi generational shooter family, and then your husband was in the AMU. Your son was an AMU, the Army Marksmanship Unit. Mm -hmm. You've been going to matches forever. Forever, yeah, probably thirty two <laughs> years of my life or more. <laughs> yeah, and you and you and you shoot black powder skirmishes and stuff and. Yeah competitions and you know the people around you shoot competitions and oh yeah you guys got a gun store that you've been running forever so <laughs> you you've seen pretty much every aspect of this yeah there's been a lot of change in the community I, I think probably one of the biggest changes is is the amount of firearms that we have of high quality the amount of mm. ammunition that we have that is turned high quality and then of course the interest and you can't help but realize that there is a big surge of female uptake in the sport where I tell you when I first started in the store no one wanted to listen to me being a girl 30 uh, years ago right. to now you know you're almost sought out because people have that respect now that's interesting when you first started doing the call screen of course we just threw threw you into the deal and I mean obviously you have a great knowledge about guns and shooting and all of that and a lot of times you actually I'll, I'll admit to people, uh, you feed me the answers. You know, you'll say, you know, John wants to talk about such and such. He thinks he has this, but this is actually what he really has. <laughs> I'm going, okay, thanks, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I can do to be helpful. <laughs> That's right. What are our callers typically like? Because I know people say, well, don't you guys get like a lot of angry people who, you know, rah, rah, rah. No, not at all. I mean, People have to understand that this really is like a family. The people that we shoot with, the people that we encounter, they come to us because, one, they have an interest or desire to learn. And those are the best people that you could possibly take under your wing and help along the way because they want to learn how to do it right. But we're very kind people. We just take seriously the importance of being prepared and understanding the safety of our loved ones. And, you know, we're, we're going to be honest about what we do. And I, I guess that's the big thing for me. You know, it's an interesting mix that we do this for recreation. Mm -hmm. uh, we love, you know, the mechanics of guns. We like, you know, the challenge, the physical and, and mostly a mental challenge of shooting because it's mostly a mental game. Yes. You know, and so you got all of that wrapped up and the complexity of hand loading and all the other part. And then you mix in, oh, yes, it's also part of our system of who we are and life-saving devices and taking care of ourselves and taking responsibility for not just ourselves, but for our family and our loved ones, and we're not going to let harm come to them. It gets to be fairly complex. It can be. And there is a lot of information to take in, a lot of information to say, okay, I'm going to let this go and try this new source or try this new type of training or these bullets or, you know, whatever it is, there's constant change there. And as we go through the seasons through the year, we have changes that we experience there mm -hmm. too. You know, so nothing stands still for us at any point in time. And I think if we stand still, we've just closed the walls around ourselves. Part of that is, I think, I'm just thinking now, is it maintain a healthy dose of skepticism about what you know to be true, right? Right. Absolutely. And, you know, just like you're constantly learning. We're doing the same thing. We're reading, we're training, we're talking to, you know, other people, people that are more experienced in different aspects of shooting than we are. And if you don't take something away from them, then you haven't listened. Because oh. with just having casual conversation around a, a bonfire or, you know, campfire or whatever it might be for you, you've just learned something. Absolutely. Well, look, I just want to thank you for everything you do for us. You are an important part of the Gun Talk team, and I just I can't even imagine doing it without you. It is a pleasure to have you on, on here with us. Well, Tom, thank you so much. I'm honored to be with you, and, and congratulations and thanks to you for all your efforts. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right. Quick break here. We're going to come back with some more of the Gun Talk team. I'm Tom Gresham, 866-TALK-GUN.
For 25 years, Crimson Trace has led the industry in laser and light technology and customer service. Now, Crimson Trace is proud to offer electronic sights and rifle scopes for tactical, target, and hunting applications with the same Crimson Trace offer of free batteries for life on all products. The new rifle scope line is also backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty from the brand that you have trusted for over two decades. Find out more at CrimsonTrace.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Mental Health and Guns. At Walk the Talk America, we are working with both the mental health community and the gun industry. Created by a gun industry veteran, Walk the Talk America seeks to raise awareness and create change through suicide prevention and firearm safety without legislation. We strive to eliminate the prejudice that firearms and mental health face. For more information and to support Walk the Talk America, please visit walkthetalkamerica.org. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. Hickok 45 here. Congratulations, Tom, on your 25th year. And I know it must have been really fun and interesting, uh, you know, having worked with John Browning, you know, through most of those designs. So uh, congratulations on all your work in the firing industry. Oh, gee, thanks, my friends. <laughs> we're, so we're doing the old jokes now. Yeah, I was working with John Browning, the uh, gun designer. Not quite. Hickok 45, of course, uh, you guys know. Uh, he does the... Incredible YouTube videos. I mean, got millions of people watching his videos out there. Again, just spreading that news. We were, in fact, the first on a lot of different things out there. We had the first uh, online channel, video channel about guns with guntalk.tv, of all things. Uh, gosh, the first national radio talk show about guns, the first podcast about guns. Uh, we, I created the first TV series about self-defense with guns. I mean, it goes on and on. First TV show about hardware of guns, guns and gear. Uh, we had the first video featuring force-on-force training. I mean, it's just like crazy stuff, all the things we've been doing. It has been so much fun, I guess, you know, honestly. I, I hope it comes through. Uh, it has been so much fun over the 25 years, just crazy how much fun we've had. Uh, and I, You're part of it. If you'd like to join us right now, 866-TALK-GUN, you can... You can be a part of this 25th anniversary show. Um, hey, Jim, if you have it, go ahead and give uh, Ryan a call there. If you've got his number, uh, he's not being able to get through. So you got it? You got him? Okay, good deal. Let me know when he's ready. Uh, okay, all right. Well, we got him then. <laughs> we were able to get him. Uh, let me bring in right now. You, you know him. He's been on here many times. He's guest hosted for me when I've been out of uh, pocket at times. My son, Ryan Gresham, who is, of course, the head guy over at Gun Talk Media these days. Hey, Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Good. 25 years. Who'd have thunk it, huh? <laughs> I know. They said it wouldn't last. That's right. I was telling everybody about the, the launch of uh, Gun Talk Nation. You got, had your first episode this week. It's a new podcast. Right. So um, a lot of the ways people listen to Gun Talk Radio these days is actually through podcast. I mean, we're doing millions of downloads each year, and... For those who find it and go, man, this is awesome, I love this, I love all the talk about guns, but I want more, well, we thought we'd do that. So we just launched <laughs> Gun Talk Nation, and it's all about um, putting out more content for folks. So we're going to have a lot of different guests on the show, and it's a, a weekly podcast that we will um, put out kind of middle of the week, and it's a little bit shorter format. It's trying to keep it under 30 minutes for a lot of folks who are 
commuting or, or say I can't commit to listening to an hour or more of a, a show. For a mm-hmm. lot of people, they mm-hmm. like those short pieces of content. So that's what we're doing. And also making it available in video form, too. We are. So uh, we're actually producing the, the podcast uh, at our studio. So we thought, why don't we just turn on the cameras and record it? So if you want to actually watch it through YouTube, Facebook, Gun Talk, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, all of those different places, you can do it that way, too. You know, uh, that brings up, we started with Gun Talk Radio 25 years ago. It's become so much more than that. And I just thought you might want to just talk about uh, a number of the things we've been able to spin off in terms of the video things and other things we've done. When you look at Gun Talk Media and what it has become, you know, it's a lot more than radio. Absolutely. Well, and the really, one of our big goals in this is providing content uh, for people who love guns and shooting and hunting and providing that content in whatever way they choose to consume it. So um, we don't care if you say, well, I listen to radio, but I don't listen to podcasts, or I, I, I don't listen to radio. I like to schedule my podcast. Or on the, on the TV side of things, we have TV shows like Guns and Gear. Um, if you, if you want to watch it on TV, on Sportsman Channel, cool. If you say, I don't have Sportsman Channel, but I'll, I'll watch it on YouTube. That works, too. So it's just it's a big theme for us to make it available to people however they want and to find us however they want. And one of the big things for that is it helps us get the message out, not just for the fun part, but also for getting the gun message out there um, to try to kind of win the hearts and minds and educate our folks mm-hmm. on how to keep going with um, the right message on guns. No, no, exactly right. I got to give you credit. You came up with the idea for first person defenders. How many years ago was that now? Oh, gosh, probably about eight years ago, we started first person defender. It's really the most popular uh, video series that we put out onto YouTube, but we put it all of these different places. But it started out on YouTube. And um, that show is, is fun to produce, it's educational. Basically, we put people into self defense scenarios. They don't know what's going to happen. They know something's going to happen. And we let the scenario play out. So we go, okay, Jim, you're going to leave the office and go to your car and just drive home. And that's it. So, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and we've gotten several takeaways from this, but one of them is that unless people are going to a lot of training, they're serious about it, uh, people very much overestimate their readiness, their qualifications, their preparedness, don't they? They do. And other things that we see is they let people get too close, just yep. actual proximity distance close to them, um, especially when it's somebody you don't know and they're coming up. And, um, I, you know, I know in our daily lives we don't typically, you know, yell at people when they walk by us in a store. Um but you just have to be alert and be aware and not let things get out of hand. Uh, and, no, and not be afraid to, to say if someone's making you uncomfortable, hey, you know, why don't you step back? Yeah, no, exactly. And, and part of what we do is we give them the tools. You know, what should I say? How should I do that? How could I move? What else could I have done? And we have great trainers on there. It's the First Person Defender. And you can find it on the Roku and the app, you know, Apple TV and all the places you can find gun talk videos, that type of thing. Uh, Ryan, the other thing you know, I wanted to talk about, and we're going to have to take a break, we're going to come back and bring you back in here, is just kind of the, the impact of the radio show and all the other things. Uh, you get recognized everywhere you go now. Yeah, that does happen. It's, it's a, a weird, strange, kind of fun thing. Um, but, yeah, they're, 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 you know, it kind of makes you realize there are gun enthusiasts everywhere no matter what state no matter what profession they're everywhere boy isn't that the truth and yeah it's not a demographic that is easily definable and i know that uh, some of the, our adversaries would like to do that but it's men it's women it's young it's old it's people of all colors all creeds all you know just whatever you can create i mean whatever you can imagine that's gun folks hey don't go anywhere we'll be right back we're talking with ryan gresham if you'd like to join us 866 talk I'm Tom Gresham. Hey, 
Hey, talking to Ryan Gresham right now. Ryan, uh, one of the things I wanted to do is thank you for everything you've done. People in the business know, but a lot of people wouldn't know. You've been handling the uh, advertising sales for this ever since you kind of, well, lost your house, lost your job, lost their city in Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> yeah, did, did the Hurricane Katrina thing and um, then was thinking about maybe you want to try something new. And I had been working in television and, and cable doing advertising. And then we had this really wild idea. Wait a minute. My dad does media, and I sell advertising. Perhaps we should work together. <laughs> and so far, so good. It has worked out quite well. It has been a great yeah. – and, bo- and, boy, let me tell you, uh, my wife, your mom, was worried. She said, well, I don't know if this whole thing about you guys working together. That may not be good for the family. You know, no, nah, we're fine. It's, it works uh, Yeah, it works out fine. <laughs> I also want to thank, uh, we're talking about people to thank, and somebody who people don't know anything about is our beloved, incredible Sarah Frank in our office, who takes care of the traffic, takes care of booking the guests, and basically takes care of all of us. Yep, absolutely. We have a great team at Gun Talk Media. I, I kind of joke we're small but mighty, and Sarah mm-hmm. was... Uh, beyond me and you, she was employee number one, and she's yes. been kind of holding down the fort and is basically our – everybody has that person in their office that's the catch-all. I do everything and know where all the bodies are buried and know mm-hmm. who to call for everything. That's Sarah. And Sarah is tolerant because I think she's smarter than all of us put together, and she kind of just <laughs> looks at us when we're screwing up like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, she's an awesome member of the team for sure. She really is. Yeah, yeah. We got great people. We got you know video editors and and camera operators and people. I mean, this it's terrific. And not to even talk about the the people on the Gun Talk Radio side of things. So there's there's that as well. So what next for all of the, the things that you're doing? I know you're always looking at at where you're going next, and you're eyeing more podcast, more podcast content. And as I kind of alluded, we're always looking for more ways to get that content out there. So um, figuring out what the next thing is. You know, we're using social media like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube to get the message out there. But for us, we, we know those are places that are a big reach, but they're not necessarily friendly to our content. So mm-hmm. we will use them, And but the idea is, We want people to be on our platforms because in case YouTube, Facebook tell us you're you're done, go away. Um, If you're if you're signed up for the newsletter, the email newsletter, if you're signed up following our Roku channel, um, those types of places, we can still get you the content. Yeah, good point. Because yeah, you never know when they're just going to say, okay, no more gun videos. Boom, they're all gone like that. And I do want to mention again, the email newsletter, you go to guntalk.com and you can sign up to get the newsletter. We call it the True Squad newsletter. We started the True Squad gosh, 20 years ago now. I was oh, hoping yeah. to get 100, 100 volunteers. Now we got more than 100,000 on the list. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's, I mean, you know what? And it's effective. If we need to send a whole bunch of people, you know, out there or have them send emails, we just alert the True Squad and boy, they show up. Exactly. And also, I shouldn't forget to mention Gundelio. It's our smartphone app. It's a great way um, to get news, to get the podcast, to get video content. But it's a free app for, for smartphones. So if you go to Gundelio.com, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, we got you covered. There you go, Gundelio. Thank you for everything you've done. Uh, you know, you're a terrific business partner as well as a, a beloved family member and, of course, our son. So it all worked out quite well. So far, so good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm glad this thing worked out. Help helped you guys uh, put me in college and all that good stuff. There is that. Yeah, we didn't have two nickels to rub together before we started doing this. Now we have two quarters, so there you go. That's right. <laughs> dozens of dollars. Dozens of dollars. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. All right. 866-TALK-GUN. That'll get you in here. Do you remember Scientifical? <laughs> if you do... Fill me in. Let everybody know what happened there. 866-TALK-GUN. This is Gun Talk.